Hello, BookTube. This is Fred, and you're watching Read by Fred. So, November is New World's November, and during the month of November, we're going to read sh short science fiction stories, uh, anything under 250 pages, and uh, just as a way to get involved and experience the wonders of science fiction. So, for the event itself, it's broken up into four prompts. So week one would be terrestrial. Week two would be extraterrestrial. Week three would be classic science fiction. So anything written prior to 1965. And week four would be robotic or artificial intelligence. And those are the prompts that were created by our hosts, Scott and Becky at the Bookish Bryants. And you don't have to follow the prompts if you don't want to. What's important is that you read some science fiction during the month of November and talk about it using the hashtag New Worlds November, and I'll put the hashtag down below. And uh, look for other people that are co-hosts and other people that are uploading videos uh, with the hashtag New Worlds November, and be sure to take part and uh, let them know what you're reading. So for me, week one, I read a couple short stories from The Future is Female, and that's an anthology of uh, short stories written by women. And unfortunately, the two that I chose for terrestrial weren't very good. Ah, uh, sorry. The first one I chose was For Sale Reasonable. And this was written by Elizabeth Mann Borges. And I believe it was 1959. No. Yeah, 1959. And Miss Borges is an interesting individual. She was born in Germany, but left Germany prior to the breakout of World War II and immigrated to Canada where she became an expert in maritime law and an environmentalist. And she won the Order of Canada in 1988. So this is a very accomplished individual. Unfortunately, her short story, For Sale Reasonable, was not the best short story that I've read. Uh, it's a dystopian future on Earth. And someone is writing an application to apply for a position uh, at, a, at a company. And they're competing against a machine. It read like an application, and that's not a good thing. The content was dated. Uh, they were quoting prices for homes that, you know, might have been reasonable in 1980, but uh, in 2020, you can't even, that's not even a down payment anymore. But uh, yeah, so not a good read. I didn't enjoy it. Uh, the next one I read, though, was The Tunnel Ahead. And this was written by Alice Glazier in 1961. 1961, okay. And it had a nice little tagline. Depopulation but without discrimination. So this was a interesting short story. And this was also from the collection of short stories, The Future is Female. And Miss Glazier was born in 1928 and unfortunately passed away in 1970. So she was only about 41, 42 years old when she passed, and she died from a fall. And some people speculate that it could have been suicide. I don't know. All I know is that she was an American writer and editor. And uh, the story itself was okay, but didn't really grip you. It's also a dystopian future set in, on Earth and um, in America. And in the story, there are one billion people living in America. And you can't get around. It's, it's practically impossible to move around without bumping into someone. And that's the premise for, well, that's the reason for the tagline, depopulation without discrimination. Um, there's a tunnel that you have to cross to get to the beach to spend a little bit of time at the beach. And um, because there are thousands and thousands of cars on the road, all automated now, the tunnel acts as a depopulation mechanism that doesn't discriminate. Wow, not a good thing when you're having to go from the beach back home. But um, Glacier does an okay job with this sh short story. Um, she talks about the scene. She talks about the people and, you know, how some people don't like the tunnel and how some people are like, well, that's just the way it is. I don't want to give too much away. It's it's an okay read. It wasn't the best that I've read. And uh, unfortunately, that was week one. So I would give week one terrestrial an 0 for 2. Sorry. 
Week two was extraterrestrial. And for this one, I read a number of short stories. So the first short story I read was First Contact by Murray Leinster. And this was from the Science Fiction Hall of Fame. And it was an okay read. It was, it was uh, what was it? It was written in 1945. And Murray Leinster, I've talked about him before. He was born in 1896 and died in 1975. So he's about 78 years old. And he was a prolific writer. He wrote over 1,500 short stories. And he was an inventor. But First Contact was an okay read. It, it felt like one of those 1950s or 1940s black and white science fiction movies that you'd watch. You know, it was that stereotypical kind of thing where the captain was all gung-ho and worried. And, uh, and the aliens were very, were very human even though they operated on different senses, I guess is the best way to say it. I don't want to say too much. The premise itself is the Earth ship is visiting the Crab Nebula and uh, it's taking, it's collecting data. And for some happy coincidence, they meet an alien ship, which is also in the Crab Nebula, collecting data, I assume. And it's a first contact situation. And neither captain wants to give anything away because they're worried that if uh, the other side finds their home planet, they'll destroy the home planet. It's a first contact. You don't know who these people are or these aliens are. Uh, you don't know what they'll do. You don't know their thinking processes. So the Earth ship and the alien ship spend weeks uh, nose to nose uh, trying to communicate, eventually being able to communicate and communicating with one another, uh, transferring knowledge, but not anything that could give their home planets away or anything that would give any idea of the weapon systems that they have on board. So it was a good novel, but it did feel like one of those 1940s, 50s science fiction movies. And uh, yeah. so I would have given it maybe a six out of 10. Uh, I did enjoy the interactions that they had with the aliens. The aliens were very human. So if you're looking for an alien race that is totally not human, this is not the book for you. These guys were, it was like reading a Western. So, so yeah, these guys were really human as well. They even cracked jokes. But all in all, it was a six out of 10. Not a bad uh, short story. Not the best short story that I've read either. The other short story that I read for uh, week two extraterrestrial was UPVC by Paul Fan Farnsworth, sorry. And this was written in 1999 and it was from the Doctor Who More Short Trips novel. And I think it's over here. Hold on. Yeah. So Doctor Who More Short Trips. And this one, I'm a little biased. I like this one. This is my favorite short story from the book or the anthology of Doctor Who short stories. And this one is is about the second doctor uh, purchasing a window but it's not just any window it's a window into anywhere you want so if you want to see the views of niagara falls if you want to see the views of mount everest if you want to see the views of an alien landscape you can do that all you have to do is order the window so the doctor, being a fugitive from his home planet and not allowed to go back to his home planet, decides to purchase the window and have the rolling hills of Gallifrey, his home planet, uh, in the window so that he can see it. And it's not just a fake, it's an actual view of the home planet. And no matter where you are, no matter where you go, it's the actual view of the hills from his home planet. So. Fast forward a couple generations later, the doctor regenerates by the way. So he's regenerated into his seventh incarnation and his companion finds this locked door on the TARDIS. So, and the companion's name is Ace. And so what does Ace do? Well, Ace does what Ace always does. She opens the locked door because if it's locked, that means something interesting is behind the door. So as she finally breaks the padlock, the doctor comes up behind her and, and says, what are you doing? And Ace apologizes and uh, says, I was just interested, curious to know what was behind the door. So the doctor says, some things are best left locked. Uh, so 
She leaves a little disappointed that she wasn't allowed to see what was behind the door. And uh, as she leaves, the doctor steps into the door to uh, revisit the window. And as he revisits the window, he sees Gallifrey uh, at that time. He sees the rolling hills. He sees the sun setting. And he realizes now that he's in his seventh incarnation, he's no longer a fugitive. Uh, and he's no longer forbidden to go to Gallifrey. But this window is a window to his past. It's a window to what it was like before everything happened for him. And the doctor realizes, he realized a long time ago that um, this was more of a distraction and you shouldn't dwell on your past. You should always move forward in life. And that's why he locked the uh, door. So he's decided to, you know, put a better lock so that uh, no one can go in there. Oh, and the window itself has a lifetime guarantee, so you really can't destroy it because it'll just get replaced. So it was a good short story. I really enjoyed that short story. The other short story that I read, I think I read two more for uh, Extraterrestrial. And the other one that I read was That Only a Mother by Judith Merrill. And this was written in 1948. And this short story shows up in two places. So it also so it shows up in... The Future is Female, and I'll put an image of that ebook up here, or I have the ebook version, and it shows up in the Science Fiction Hall of Fame. So I read the ebook version, and uh, Judith Merrill, let's talk about the author. Judith Merrill was born in 1993 and passed away in 1997, so she was around 74 years old. She was an American and Canadian science fiction writer. Uh, she left the United States in the 1960s to protest the uh, Vietnam War. Uh, she believed it was undemocratic and didn't want to stay in the United States. And that's why she moved to Canada. And she spent the rest of her life in Canada. Uh, she was the uh, nominee, or this, mo this actual short story um, that only a mother was the 1970 Science Fiction Writers of America uh, nominee. It didn't win it, but it was a nominee. And I don't blame them for not winning it because it wasn't very good. Sorry. So the premise that only a mother, um, it's in the 1950s. Uh, it's amid the, a nuclear war going on. And um, babies are born with deformities. So this mother, her husband is in the war in the field far away. And uh, she's at the hospital about to give birth and she gives birth. And there are no facial deformities. So she's excited. She's ecstatic. She's telling um, her husband through letters how the baby has learned to talk at only six months old and can sing. Like an incredible achievement, but she still hasn't been able to crawl. And she's saying that the baby's stubborn. So the husband finally comes home from, from the war. He's on leave. And uh, he's changing the diaper and realizes that... Um, there were no facial deformities. It was all physical deformities. And I'm giving a little too much away and I apologize. It wasn't a great short story. I didn't, it didn't appeal to me, but um, no, it, it just, it lacked the engaging aspect to it that I was hoping for. The other short story that I read was Space Episode by Leslie Perry. And this was written in 1941. And this was also in The Future is Female. And this one was a very good short story. I really enjoyed this one. So Leslie Perry was born in 1920 and she passed away in 1970. So she was 50 years old at the time. And she was an American science fiction fan, writer, and illustrator. Uh, there's not a lot of information on Leslie Perry. So I, that's all the information I had. But this was a very good episode or a very good short story. So the premise is these three individuals, a two, two men and a woman are in a rocket ship coming back from Mars, when a meteorite hits the um, a part of the spaceship, and they're going to crash into Earth, so they're trying to figure out who is the one that's going to go outside and repair it. Because once it gets repaired, um, they can't get back into the rocket ship. So it's it's essentially a suicide mission. So the uh, female in the novel, the protagonist is couldn't believe that the male the two male companions one is has his hands in his his hands in his face and he can't believe what's going on the other one is dumbfounded um and she sees all this and she 
she remembers the history that the three of them have. They're all adventurers. They're all thrill seekers. They, they laughed in the face of death. And here they are in a rocket ship about to crash into Earth. And the two guys can't get their act together. So she gets angry and she decides, well, if they're not going to do anything, I'm going to do something. So she puts on the spacesuit, goes outside, uh, repairs the damage, and uh, the rocket ship is saved. It makes a it uh, changes course so that it doesn't crash into Earth. And unfortunately, she's left out there by herself. And um, it was a very well-written short story. It was very engaging. It was very dramatic. And uh, you continued, you wanted to read this short story. You weren't asking yourself what was going on here. You weren't rolling your eyes going, when is this going to end? This was a really good short story. Leslie Perry did a great job with this uh, short story. In the end, uh, I, I really enjoyed the way that it ended. Uh, she was a thrill seeker to the end. And uh, the way that she decided how she was going to go was unexpected. And uh, you know what? I applaud the protagonist in the story for taking the actions that she took. Anyways, so that was my two weeks for, no for New Worlds November. Uh, I'm also taking part in Nonfiction November. And I finished The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. Uh, on Friday of last week and I loved that book that was an excellent book and I will be doing a review for that book later on but um, for week three for New World's November it is classic science fiction and this is where we read anything that was published prior to 1965 and I have chosen uh, Contagion by Catherine Ann McLean and this was written in 1950 and this is part of the Futurist Female. Again, I'll put an image of the ebook version that I have up here. And I am looking very much forward to this book, or this short story. And Catherine Ann McLean was born in 1925 and passed away in 2019. So she was 94 years old. And she is a US, an American science fiction author. And she won the 1971 Nebula Award, not for Contagion, for another short story. But uh, I am definitely looking forward to reading this one. And uh, I'll let you know how it goes next week. Anyways, that's my wrap up for the midway through of New Worlds November. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments below what you're reading and uh, if you're taking part in New Worlds November. Again, look for the hashtag New Worlds November and uh, be sure to comment on everyone's videos. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is Fred and you're watching Read by Fred.